Welcome back to the TDD of FizzBuzz video series or FizzBuzz TDD video series, whatever we actually want to call this. I haven't actually decided yet. So, in our last video, we completed the third requirement that when a multiple of five is passed in, we return buzz, as we can see right here. So now we can move on to the final requirement that when a mul number is a multiple of three and five, return FizzBuzz. But one of the things three and five it returns fizz buzz what i'd actually like to do at the moment i didn't do this in the last video because uh, it kind of slipped my mind uh, is we're passing so we can do refactoring now this says we should you know return buzz given an int 10 but why 10 it's really that 10 is a multiple of five we can some of us not everyone can see that can recognize that can understand that can do that kind of math quickly in their head it is simplistic math, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's always easy math, and especially not for everyone. So as our intent is to make this code as readable as we can, well, that's what we want to do as software engineers. So we want our code to be re as readable as we can. So one of the ways we can make this more readable is actually to explicitly define it as a multiple of 5. So even if they don't know what 5 times 2 is, what that equals they know that we are testing a multiple of five and while this may seem trivial if it helps even one person you're working with to define things explicitly so they are easier to understand then it is worth the minimal amount of time it takes us and we understand it just as easily so we're going to go through and update all of these to represent what we actually mean when we say three or when we say six. We mean the multiple of three where three occurs is multiplied by one. And we don't mean six, we mean three, uh, the number that is a multiple of three twice. That is the multiple of three times two. I wonder how you said that correctly. Yeah. And same here, five and five times two. So we are going to use that format. And I got extra white line here, so I'm totally going to get rid of that. So let's go ahead and write our new test for our final requirement that our method should return fizzbuzz when it is a multiple of 3 and 5. So now we can update this and I'm okay by name with giving the explicit value because that's the value we're providing. Sometimes, uh, and I don't disagree with it, I just don't, it's not my preference um, that we're given the integer of 3 and 5 or 3 times 5. So we can represent that here. I prefer to be explicit um, on these. Just the names, it's just my, it's, pure preference on this one. Um, also, the naming sucks if I try and do 3 and 5 on this one. There are other ways to name it where that reads better, and it just comes out better. So, let's go ahead and not just write code. We have a failing test. Why does it fail? Well, in this case, I know it's a multiple of 5, so it's actually going to hit this. I expect it to hit this first pass. So that our cert is going to fail because we expect fizzbuzz and we get back buzz. We expect fizzbuzz, we got back buzz. Fantastic. It is failing for the reason we want. Let's fix that though. So if our input is equal to what we inputted, then we want to return fizzbuzz. Fantastic. It passes. Anything I can do? Mm, no. I don't think there's anything I want to refactor right now. So I am going to write another test. And here we want it to be 3 times 5 times 2. Now this, this doesn't read clearly. Is it 3 times 5 times 2? I mean, it equals the same thing. Multiplication is transitive or additive or, or transitive. That's one. Um, but we want this to be legible 
as readable as possible for everyone. And in this case, um, yeah. Uh, we can put unnecessary parentheses around this because it improves readability. ReSharper may actually give us some suggestions as it's doing here to remove redundant parentheses. I'm sorry you can't see that clearly. It gets cut off a little bit. Uh, but it can help readability. So there are some times we kind of want to avoid some of the cleanup because it does meet our readability expectations. And once we do that, we can rename our method. See our tests fail. Um, again, I'm going to expect fizzbuzz, but I expect, uh, but I, I'm uh, predicting that my actual value will be buzz. And again, that is the case. Expected is fizzbuzz, actual is buzz. I know my input is 30 because I have done that math in my head. That's the number I'm expecting. Uh, I mean, we could very much, and it would be absolutely 100% reasonable to do this. That is my input. That is that is my input. It's not 30. That's really not what I'm defining it as. My, my name says that, but this is what I'm giving it. So it is perfectly acceptable to do this. This has absolutely zero ex extra expectation on the system it will be computed and hard-coded as when it compiles <clears throat> and so now we have a passing test again so one of the things that's a little bit challenging is when we write our things in different forms they're harder to start to see the patterns and how they relate to each other. So one of the Kent Beckisms that I love, there are many of them, is to make similar things more similar and dissimilar things more dissimilar. So in this case, we we are these are similar. We we have some similarities, but they're a little bit dissimilar too. So we want to make similar things more similar, which is a value of this form, I mean, we could do, come on, thank you. Uh, and this is, so the, either way makes them more similar. Uh, I, I actually think this is kind of more, more similar than 15 or 30 because we see the five and the three and the two in there. So we know that just these numbers are actually the variance, not uh, the five and the three. So that shows us when we do a general form, Five and three are the numbers we're looking for. We didn't show this with the uh, things in here, but it is a way we can do that that helps the readability, helps improve the similarities to identify the patterns. Now, I'm not actually gonna use this, <laughs> use that aspect to it, but it, uh, when we're working in more complex code, it can't, transforming things into more similar states can help identify those kind of similarities. And it does help a little bit here because um, we know that the two and the one are the variance. So five and three is what matters. So if we're gonna use this is multiple of, and the number of the check is our input, and the number we want back is what's common, five times three. So this actually told us what that common number is. The similarity shows that we are comparing, we're returning fizzbuzz for multiples of five and three. <clears throat> so making things as similar as we can, representing what it is, helps us find the smallest piece of variance to make the best general solution. So now we've created the general form. And there, there, there is a pattern here. So we can actually do five times one and three times one to really show that, I, I mean, we can. They're not actually showing in because this is also you know, times one. Not really showing us any difference there. I'm not seeing it. I'll, I'll try these things though. 
So, I mean, we do see we have five, we have three, we have multiple of, we have input, we have fizz buzz. There is a lot of commonality here. Is there something we could do to clean this up? I don't know. I have other ways of approaching it, um, but there is a repeating pattern here. But sometimes we get down to the point of method calls and we can't actually clean up that pattern. Like we can't reduce calling methods any further. I don't know. Possibly, I'm probably going to play with it because it getting to this point saying there's a pattern, but don't worry about it always bothers me. So I would love to find a way to ref to refactor this pattern into something readable, which is a huge constraint on what solutions we can come up with. And then, you know, once it's readable, make sure we're not duplicating anything, which is kind of our intent here is to get rid of duplication. But trying to get rid of duplication, and this is why the four rules of simple design actually are in priority order. Our code must work. It must be, I'm just going to simplify readable. We, we must then not repeat ourselves, And then it's got to be simple. Here, if we do attempt to remove, if we, the solutions I've seen for attempting to remove this duplication of these three if statements, reduce readability and reduce it to a point that I think it's detrimental to the code. So I will accept this this duplication, apparent duplication, I'm guaranteed it is duplication, this apparent duplication for readability. Readability is how we read code. That's how we know what it does. So if we obfuscate its behavior or what it does, then it's harder to work in the code. It's harder to get things done, better chance bugs are gonna be introduced. So here, we'll leave this, and that is our fourth requirement and last requirement of FizzBuzz. So we are now fully implemented for FizzBuzz. And if we really want to, we could inline this, but eh, I kind of like it. If it's a multiple of, then we do these things. So there we go. FizzBuzz, TDD'd, and we're done. I mean, it took a little longer than I've done it. Uh, but uh, thank you for watching the video series of FizzBuzz TDD'd.